electric fields. So I want to show you how to do a problem like this, and I'm going to show you how to do it in Python in a better way. So imagine that I have these two charges, Q1 and Q2, and we want to find the net electric field. Where's my cursor? There it is. Okay, so suppose I want to find the electric field at this point right here. Well, what you do, you have to find this distance, right? The distance from Q1 to that point. You have to find this distance, the distance from Q2 to that point, R1 and R2. And then I could use this equation that we normally use. Uh, electric field is KQ over R squared. But there's a problem because the electric field is a vector, right? So the electric field due to 1 is in the negative x direction. The electric field due to 2 is positive is that way. So now I have to like find the magnitude of these things. I have to find the distances. I have to find the angles between them. It's just, it's just a disaster. And then once I do that, I could, I could add up those vectors. It's a, it's a mess. Okay, so for the algebra-based courses, I mean, it's, I don't like it at all. But I'm going to show you how to do this with Python for pretty much any problem the right way. We're going to do it the right way. Okay, so here's the generic model for calculating the electric field. So I have some charge Q1. I have an observation location right here that I want to find the electric field. And I need to know the vector location of charge Q1. It could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. And I need to find the vector location right here, uh, RO. That's the observation location. That's where the point where I want to find the electric field. The first thing I need to do is to find the vector R. So the vector R is the vector from Q1 to RO. And we can choose our normal um, rules for, you know, displacement to find that vector R. It's just going to be this vector position minus that vector position, and that gives us R. And then I need to find this vector field E. I can use the equation for the electric field. It looks like this. Um, I use four, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught instead of k just because it looks cooler. So it's that constant Q, and then I have to find the magnitude of that vector right there and square it. But wait! There's a big, big, big problem because that's not a vector, right? Scalar, 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 scalar. It's a scalar. So I need to include this right there, r hat, where r hat is the unit vector in the direction of r. So if you don't remember unit vectors, you can just take this vector r and divide by the magnitude of that. And what you get is a vector that has a magnitude of 1, right, because you're dividing by its own magnitude, and it gives it has no units. But it gives you a direction. So this will give you, this will make this vector in the direction of r hat. Now, if q1 is negative, and that's a negative number, then we're going to get it in the opposite direction. So it's all going to work. It's going to be perfect. It's awesome. Okay. So here's the general recipe if you want to keep it in your recipe book. So we're going to find the location of the charge q. We're going to find the value of charge q. You need to know both those things. I need to find the vector value of the observation point. So those are all the inputs I'm going to have. Then I'm going to find the vector r from q to the observation point, And then I'm going to find the magnitude of r, because I need that in my equation. And I'm going to find the unit vector r. And then I'm going to plug everything into that equation, and I'm going to get it. So I'm going to show you how to do this in Python, because WebVPython has awesome built-in vector tools that we can make this quite simple. And then you can use this for a bunch of different things. It's going to be awesome. Okay, so let's just use this particular problem. Suppose I have a charge Q1 of 6 nanocoulombs at the origin. I have charge Q2 of negative 9 coulombs at point 1 on the y-axis. I want to find the electric field here uh, at point 2, point 3. I may have made up these numbers. It doesn't really matter. So let's just get to it. Oh, my seat's a little off. Okay. Let's adjust this there. That's a little bit better. Okay, we're going to get to work now. I'm switching over to uh, web vpython. So if you haven't used web vpython before, this is what it looks like. It even says it right up there. I'm using trinket.io. You could use GlowScript also. Uh, this is uh, Python online and it has vector tools built in so you don't need to import anything. But let's just get started. I'm going to assume you at least are partially familiar with this. Let's just go ahead and enter in uh, q1. So I'm going to say q1 is equal to 6 nanocoulomb, so e to the negative 9. I also need the constant k. k is 9 times 10 to the 9th. And you can put units here if you want. So this would be coulombs. I'm going to put that as a comment. You can put units here if you want. And it would be uh, newton meters squared per coulomb squared. But that's just a comment. Uh, now I need the vector location 
of Q1. And I used X and Y coordinates, but vectors in Python have three dimensions. We need to use three dimensions. So remember, this was at the origin. So I'm going to say R1, the vector location of charge Q1, is going to be vector 0, 0, 0. So it's at the origin. Okay, so you have to have three coordinates. If I try to just do two, Python's going to say, what are you doing? Can't do that. Okay, so we're going to do that. Uh, now I need the, I'm going to just do one charge first. Let's find the vector value of the observation location. I'm going to call that RO, and it was equal to vector, what was it? 0.2, 0 0.30. Okay, so we really have everything we need to know. Um, let's just go ahead and calculate the electric field. Uh, we could do this in pieces, but we can do it all in one step. I'm going to call this E1 so we can find an E2, and then I'm going to show you how to do it as a function. Uh, so E1 is going to be K times Q1. Now I do need to find R. Let's just go ahead and do that. R is equal to RO minus R1, and that's fine. So uh, divided by the magnitude of R. So Python and Python mag is a built-in function that returns the magnitude of the vector r. So I don't have to worry about taking the square root and squaring all the components and all that stuff. But I do need to square this magnitude. And this will give me the scalar value of the electric field. Now I want to multiply it by the unit vector r hat. And that's also built into Python. So if I say norm, spelled correctly, of r, and I put it at the top just to make sure I get the order of operations right, uh, even though I think it would work. Uh, so that's the r hat. So I have k, q1, r hat over r squared, and that is e1. And let's just go ahead and print that just so we can see what it looks like. e1 equals uh, e1. And I'll even put the units, newtons per coulomb, and I'm going to run that. And I made a mistake. I just saw it right now. Vecto. <laughs> I was running it. It's like Vecto. Okay, so there you go. There's my electric field due to e1. Now I could do it for e2. Let's do the same thing. And in fact, uh, I'm going to go up here and say Q2 is equal to negative 9E9. That's what I said, right? And then I need R2. It's vector, uh, what was it? 0, 0 0.1, 0. Uh, you'll notice here for this one, I didn't actually have to do this step because the R1 was equal to RO because it would start at the origin, but it's a good idea to do it anyway. Once I do that, I can just, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it. And then that shows you how easy this is. All I have to do is change this to R2. I'm renaming R as the new thing. I don't, I don't care, right? You can do that in Python. Change that to 2, change that to 2, change that to 2, change that to 2, and then I'm going to run it. Oh, and that is going to print it. And there's my E2. Now I can find the total E. E is E1 plus E2. And I'm going to print that. E equals E newtons per coulomb. If you want to print the magnitude, let's do that too, because sometimes you want that. And these books ask for it. Uh, e equals mag E newtons per coulomb. Run. There you go did it. Okay, so I want to make it a little bit better um, just because it's fun. So let's make this a little bit better. What I want to do is I want to take all my stuff here and instead of doing this every time, I'm going to run this as make this a function. So let's just delete all this stuff and let's define a function, def e. And when in Python we can define a function, we need to tell it what we're going to give it, and then we can print out what it gives us out. So I want to give it uh, the charge, Q. I want to give it the location of the charge and the location of the observation location. That's everything I need to know to get the electric field due to that charge. So let's call this QT for temporary, RT for temporary, and ROT for temporary observation location. That way, if I use another observation location, I won't get the things confused. And then you put a colon, and now everything in this tab and dent is part of there. So the first thing I'm going to do is to calculate R. So R is just going to be ROT minus RT, same as what we did before. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and calculate the temporary electric field, ET. It's K times QT times norm TRT divided 
no, r, divided by mag r squared. And then I'm going to return that. Return et. So let's just test this. Print e1 equals e of q1 r1 ro newtons per coulomb. And then I'm going to run it. Same thing. Okay, so that's no surprise. But now watch what we can do. I can edit this and I can just do everything in one fell swoop. I can say E is equal to E plus E Q2 R2 RO and that's it, right? Because each one of these is a function and I'm adding those two, those functions return a vector and then I'm adding those two vectors together. It's as easy as it could be. And it's pretty fun too. And there you go. I think that's the same thing I had before, but I'm not 100% sure, but I think it is. Wait, the time's 10 to the 20th. That's not right. Oh, K, Q1, Q, aha, uh -huh, that's why. 9 times 10 to the negative 9th. <laughs> I wasn't even looking at the numbers. I was just so excited to plow forward. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I will save this. Let's save this. Uh, e field calculator. E field calculator. I don't know why. I'll fix that. And then I'm going to give you a link to the code down below. But there you go. Using Python to do good, not evil. The end.